Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I am going to show you dozens and dozens of silk swatches doo, 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 and some pictures of garments made out of silk fabrics. And uh, I'm going to get you super up close and personal with these swatches. And so that, you know, when you're talking to your design teacher, or when you're talking to your boss, and they're like, hey, don't you think a mousseline would be better than a gazar in this instance? You know what the hell they're talking about. In a couple weeks, I'm going to upload a more informational lecture uh, video on silks and its characteristics and its behaviors and how to work with it and how to design with it and, you know, lining considerations and things like that. But for now, let's take a look at what they look like. You're going to see a lot of uh, contact information from a bunch of textile companies. And uh, that is just because I have their headers and swatch cards doesn't mean I endorse this company. OK, some of these headers and swatch. This is so old. I don't even know if these people are still in business. All right. But I got their swatch cards somehow at some point in time. OK, so there's that. Number two. Okay, if you recall in the very first Fabrics 101 video, I said that there are always two components to every fabric. Okay, silk is not a fabric. Okay, silk is a fiber, right? Silk is the ingredient that goes into fabric. Okay, in order to make anything, okay, you need the fiber, silk, and you need the construction, right? And so, is it woven? Is it knit? Is it matted? Okay. And, you know, how is the silk made? Is it a crinkly fiber, uh, crinkly yarn? Is it a smooth yarn? Is it a satin weave? Is it a, is it a jersey knit? Is it a, like all these different constructions create all these different fabrics. So don't ever talk to someone about a fabric and say, Hey, I want a silk. Okay. Because we have these thick, four ply crepes and then we have these really thin sheer organzas all made from silk so just saying silk doesn't actually mean anything right so always keep that in mind when discussing fabrics let's look, take a look at these let's look at sheer silks first first up is chiffon one of the most common fabrics out there Look how sheer that is. And if you can see really close, the individual yarns are kind of twisted and crinkly. All right. You got to get real close to see. You know, I want you guys to, I really want you to visit a fabric store and just walk around and see how things are labeled and get a feel for them. All right. Just, Walk up to the silk chiffon, and it doesn't matter if you're not going to buy it. Go look at it and be like, oh, okay, this is silk chiffon. And then go to the polyester chiffon and be like, oh, this is polyester chiffon. And see if you can tell the difference. Because you can, okay? There's a distinct difference between silk and polyester chiffon, much to the polyester industry's dismay. Okay? But you can see it's crinkly. It's got a plain weave, which means there are no distinct diagonals running through it or a distinct texture, just the crinkling from the individual yarns. If you want something really crinkly, you have crinkle chiffon. Look at someone's beautiful handwriting. That was not me, okay? But look at how crinkly that is. Still super sheer. Okay, so see the difference between the two? Here's organza, and organza is also very sheer, very smooth, also a plain weave. Can you see the weave in there? Okay. And you can have a plain organza like this. Okay, that's super sheer. You can have a satin faced organza, okay, which really looks like gazar. Oh, here's a swatch of that crinkle chiffon from a different company. You know, it's slightly different company to company, but it's, you know, very distinctly crinkle chiffon. You can also get stretch chiffon, which, you know, because it's stretch, 
it's not going to be 100% silk. This one is sponged, sponged stretch chiffon. Wait, 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 wait. All right. If anything is that stretchy on the cross, then it is not 100% silk. It's going to have some spandex or lycra in it. Spandex is the generic. Lycra is the brand, the trademark for a specific brand of spandex. Yeah, because you had to put the elastic in there, it's just not as sheer as just straight up chiffon. Here's this company's chiffon. And yeah, I'm going to show you these from different companies just so you get a feel for the range available. Theirs in general is a little bit more opaque than the Eastern Silks Company uh, swatches. So the main difference between chiffon and organza is the crispness, the body. Okay, Organza has a bit more body. Okay, it ha It's fewer mummies, but it's the way it's woven, everything is crisper. Okay, you hear that? And then here, you don't really hear that. It's just mushy. You're just hearing my scaly fingernails or fingerprints on the fabric. Okay. You see a little bit of my leftover indigo dye. Excuse me. My hands have been through the ringer lately. Okay. And it's mushy and it's flimsy and it's very drapey, whereas the organza is a bit crisper and... Uh, Look at this sharp fold, right? Now, I'm gonna get more into this stuff in the second video, but do you see this AM slash M? This is not millimeter, okay? This stands for mummy. Some people pronounce it mummy, and not to be confused with mumme, which is body in Korean, and not to be confused with mummy, the dead zombies in Egypt, okay? But mummy or mummy, uh, M slash M, not MM for millimeter. And that is the weight of the of the silk fabric. So we'll get into more of that later, but basically the smaller the number, okay, six mummy, eight mummy, the more lightweight the fabric compared to, you know, these dupionis that are 34 mummy, you know, very heavy and thick. This is a three-ply crepe. 30 mummy. This is a four ply crepe, 37 mummy. Okay. So when you see this M slash M number, higher the number, the heavier the fabric. Just keep that in mind for now. This is the Fabric for Fashion, the swatch book. I love this book and I highly recommend this or any version of this. This is mousseline, which you know, I do think it's pretty much the same thing as crinkle chiffon. It looks and behaves like it, so we're just going to go with that. And here's silk muslin. It's a plain weave, but it's very loose. You see how you can see the individual yarns? It's very textured because it's so loose. Like The tighter the weave uh, and all the yarns are super close together, it looks smoother. Like, I mean, look at this thing. The weave is so tight and smooth. The surface is very smooth, but this one is very loosely woven, okay, also very sheer. And then again, that organza, super crisp, okay? A lot of the time you'll see these like cheaper versions that look glittery. Usually those are organza. I have yet to see a silk organza that has that glittery look. And yeah, it is important for you to understand the difference between the silk version of these fabrics and the polyester version, because you don't want to talk to a sale, a fabric sales rep and get duped into buying polyester you know, when they were labeled and priced as silk. Here's Silk Georgette. Georgette is not as sheer as chiffon, but it's still very thin, still something you'd probably wear a bra with. And you see a little bit of that pebbly surface texture. Here's a double Georgette, which is a 16 mummy. Here's silk jersey, which is a knit, so it's stretchy. And jerseys, you can always tell the right side of the fabric because they curl to the face. Okay, when you pull it, you know how it curls up? That's the surface, that's the face. Okay. And then here's silk habitai. Also pretty sheer, very lightweight and thin. 
okay? And a little, one of the more inexpensive ones, uh, this is something that I like to use as lining for silk garments. And here is their version of the Habitai. Sometimes it's called China Silk. I don't like that so much. Really, really old school, in just like super old people. Like not my version of old, but like super, super old people. They'll say Jap Silk. We don't say that anymore for obvious reasons. So don't go around using that thinking that's the correct term, okay? Can you see my silk, uh, my skin tone under that lime green? So yeah, it's a little bit sheer. Okay, it's eight mummy, but the way it's woven, it's a little bit more opaque than the others. It's very lightweight, you know, it's a little bit crisp, not as crisp as the organza, but it's got that smooth surface. This company calls this a cotton poly dyed chiffon, all right? And it's actually quite cool. The feel is very matte, but not super dry. It's still got a little bit of sheen to it. Not sheen, but like a smoothness to it uh, that feels really nice. And it's sheer. You can see my finger outline clearly. This is their little color card. So this is nice. You know, this is a nice, um, maybe less dressy version of a silk chiffon. This is what they call a cotton silk dyed broadcloth. Broadcloths are kind of simple, plain weave, lightweight, often used for shirts and blouses. And you can see it's see-through, not as see-through as the chiffon. And I gotta press my headers, this is ridiculous. Okay, and then this is their little color card. But well, that's really nice, okay? And it feels nice, it's that it's the matte, fuzziness a little bit of the cotton with the smooth and slinkiness of the silk blended together, which I think is nice. It's more cotton than silk. It's 75 cotton, 25 silk. This is poly chiffon. Poly chiffon is, it's, it's kind of hard to demonstrate in this video format, but poly chiffon is stiffer and often shinier than silk chiffon. Okay, The best way to really look at it is to go to the fabric store and look at them side by side and feel them side by side. But this is not this is actually one of the nicer polyester chiffons that I've come across. Um, oh, it's got some stretch in it. This is silk taffeta and it's you, feel, you hear that? Wrestle, 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 wrestle. I kind of, this always reminds me of um, like old period films where you hear the petticoat swishing. Anyway, so silk taffeta. It's kind of gone out of favor. People really associate it with prom now. But it's a very crisp, easy to work with silk. You know, it doesn't move. It's not slinky like a lot of other silken fabrics. And um, yeah, it's really lightweight, but I mean, it's not really see-through. Can you see my fingers? How many whole fingers am I holding up? Here's this company's Silk Double Georgette. Very nice, thin, matte. You see that pebbly surface? That's very indicative of Georgettes as opposed to, you know, satin charmeuses that have that shiny smooth surface, you know, Georgettes will have that pebbly surface. Let's talk about some slinky ones. This is silk charmeuse. This is uh, 19 mummy. Oh my God, this feels so nice. Oh, it's so nice. Uh, yes, go to the fabric store, feel things, all right? Just look at this luster, okay? It doesn't have a tacky, high gloss shine. It's just lustrous and magical, and I don't even like this color, but this fabric is mesmerizing me. Ugh, I love playing with fabrics, man. All right, and this is heavy charmeuse. This one doesn't say how many mummies it is. It's about 30. I'm gonna like 28 to 32 mummy is about heavy charmeuse. This company, their heavy charmeuse is 30 mummy. 
you know, it's got that smooth satiny surface, same as the charmeuse. But I like heavy charmeuse for bottom weights. I mean, I'm not gonna make fabric, I'm not gonna make pants out of fabric like this, but I would make a, like a drapey jacket. Okay, maybe a vest, and then uh, I would use the silk charmeuse for more dresses and blouses. I would do some skirts in a heavy charmeuse. Okay, oh, just feel that. Oh, it's so pretty. Sorry, sorry. I get it. I get excited. I do. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not really allowed that sorry. This is a polyester dyed satin cloth, and it's not really satiny. Satin tends to be more crisp and firm, and this is kind of slinky, so it's like in between a satin and a charmeuse. But it's got that finish, but you see how it looks a little bit more plasticky? It's hard to tell when it doesn't have a direct color match, but... You see a little bit of the glittery plasticiness in the polyester compared to kind of the smooth gloss of the silk. Okay, the hand is different. Again, go compare. Oh my God, I forgot all these swatches I had over here. Why do I have so many swatches? Don't answer that. These are from yet another company and these are all silk chiffons or varieties that's a silk muslin there there's a crinkle chiffon or mousseline straight up simple black chiffon this one is more of a georgette oh it's pretty or, there's the black one here are some organzas you see how stiff these are compared to how drapey these are can okay, keep that in mind when you're looking at organzas the cotton version of organza is called organdy, and so it looks similar, but it will be made out of cotton. It's got that sheer but stiff quality. These are satin face organzas. Here are more organzas. Look how see-through that is. Okay. Organzas are also, you, you know, not just used for self fabric, but they're often used in the understructure. So as interfacing, gathered into tutus, part of petticoats. Look at all these fun colors. Let's talk about some crepes here. Whoa. So crepes are blouse weight, drapey fabrics with a distinct surface texture. That's super cool. It's like silk meets poodle perm, but like awesome. Da -da -da. Ooh, that feels nice. Look at this. It's like a weird seersucker thing going on where you have panels of, I don't even know what is happening. I'm not even going to describe it. You just look at it and enjoy it. <laughs> but it does kind of look like a seersucker to me where you have ruched strips and then you have non-ruched strips of crinkled fabric. Dope. Here's a nice crepe, smooth. Uh, non satin face. You have satin face, and okay, so you call, people call them crepe back satins or satin back crepes because they're reversible. <laughs> you can see the inside is matte, and the outside is very lustrous. This is a very heavy one. It's a 38 mummy crepe back satin. Really nice for uh, bottom weight. But yeah, these are all beautiful. Whoa. So much heavier. So this looks like a crinkle chiffon, but it's heavier than crinkle chiffon. I guess that's why they got put in the crepe category. Crepey, crinkly crepe. <laughs> like when you read descriptions, people will use like uh, non-fashion people will use the term crepey to mean kind of like dry, brusque, withered, weathered, right? So keep that in mind. Here's another seersucker-esque shadow stripe. Shadow stripe is when you have a stripe that comes off the texture, not colors of stripes, but texture. So shiny, not shiny. 
Shiny, not shiny stripe. Shadow stripe. That's cool. All right. Here are some heavy crepes. So, yeah. These feel like four plies. Okay. Four ply crepe. This one is a stretched four ply crepe, and it is a 37 mummy. And it has 5% stretch in it. This is a three ply crepe, which is a 30 mummy. Four ply crepe is 40 mummy. Woo, that's thick. And you can see the surface. It's almost like horizontal ribs if you get real close. More heavy crepes. Oh my God, they were really trying to get my business. Dang. I sent so many of these. Woo, that's a beautiful red. Ugh. Someone make me a lipstick in this color. Thank you. I know, like I don't have enough red lipsticks, right? <laughs> I was just having this conversation with someone the other day about how many red lipsticks we have. This is suede charmeuse. And the suede brush, nap, kind of like you take the surface and you kind of brush it uh, so that you get a, a softer, fuzzier finish. It's not as shiny as these. Like this is charmeuse, not brush, and so it's pretty shiny. And then these are just are slightly more matte. I like these a lot. Here is a non-brush charmeuse, and here is a brush charmeuse. Do you see the difference in the textures and how shiny and then not shiny? Okay, this one is more kind of an evenly light black shade, and then this one has really glossy highlights. Whoa, that one is super shiny. So yeah, you can make variations where things are shinier, slightly heavier, slightly more matte, a little bit lighter. Ooh, what? <laughs> this feels like unicorns dreaming of rainbows. All right, and now let's look at some stiffer materials. This is, this is Shantung, and you can see it by the thick horizontal cross grain uh, yarns, okay, they're very slubby, okay, these are some tangles and knots in the fabric, and Shantung is not super shiny and glossy at all, it's rough in texture, okay, but still refined looking, beautifully tightly woven, and then this is a silk noir jersey, so it's matte, it's very soft. Somebody make me a sweater in this, thanks very much. Mm. And again, you can tell it's a jersey because it curls to the face. Okay, when you pull it, it curls to the face. So here is the Silk Noir knit and here's the Silk Noir woven. Okay, you can see that slubby, matte, textured quality. This is Silk Tussa. Okay, it's a brusque shirting, okay, matte, but still pretty smooth, okay? I don't feel slubs or rough texture. Dupioni is like Shantung, where you see the slubs and knots and tangles, but more refined looking. Here's natural silk. Here's some Silk Noir canvas. So the same as this up here, but with fatter yarns. And so you're getting that awesome texture happening. And this is Wild Silk. You didn't know silk could look like this, did ya? Okay, but it, there's still like some of this drapey quality. Like it looks like it would be stiff as a board. Like you could make a basket out of it. But it's actually a lot squishier and drapier than you think. These are t-shirt knits. So this is micromodal. And modal is a type of rayon. So it's like a repurposed or re... What's the word I'm looking for? It's a type of cellulosic fab fiber and it soaks up dye really well. It's super soft. This is a 
silk modal spandex, and it's so nice and smooth and wonderful. But here's the thing about that is silk is a protein fiber, modal is a cellulosic fiber, so you have to, when you get a silk modal blend, you have to think about uh, how you're going to dye these if you ever are going to dye them. And then cotton modal is, I don't know if you can tell in this video, but much more matte. This one, the right is the cotton and the left is the silk. The silk is smoother and slinkier and the cotton is, it's still soft, but it's not as slinky. It doesn't fall as small and slinky as the silk does. I pulled this nylon swatch for you so you can see that nylon just kind of has this very plasticky, shiny feel. It's very stiff and it just doesn't have the same look. Even this one, it is 60% cotton. So even this one, it's softer and smoother. It doesn't have that shiny, plasticky sort of smooth uh, shine to it. Typically, if you have a cotton satin, it's called sateen, S-A-T-E-E-N. So keep that in mind. When you're working with a wholesaler, ask for a color card for their company and you will get something that looks like this. And keep in mind that they'll have one side, but usually what they do is they have, they use a fabric that is also shiny on the other side. So you can tell what the color will look like when it's when you pick something shiny like a charmeuse or a satin. And then the outside is what the color is gonna look like if you order something matte like a crepe. I also wanna show you some pictures, so many pictures. Taffeta, again, it's got that really crisp when you draw it, you're gonna see a lot of these pull lines because taffeta has very little drape. It's just very crispy. Here is a photo of the Shantung and you can see the beautiful slubs going through it. I do have a Dupioni, look at that. Can you see the slubs? Oh, I made an evening gown out of this amazing gold heavy charmeuse ones and I kept all the scraps because they were just too magnificent to throw away. It looks like molten gold. Hello heavy charmeuse. I love you so much. Jacquard. That's right. We're back to Jacquard. Jacquard is when the pattern is woven into the fabric and not printed on. Right? And they're done on special jacquard looms. And brocade, okay, long story short, brocades are very fancy sort of jacquards with fleur de lis and family crests and crazy floral designs. And damasks are reversible. I bought a shift dress. No, it's a sheath dress, excuse me. I bought a sheath dress at a vintage shop in this fabric, but it was a little too long for me. And so I just cut all this off and I saved this material because who wouldn't? Look at that. Look at this beautiful thing. Oh, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> fabric. Oh, oh my God, look at this nice color match happening here. Can we say fabric board? I think it's happening. Okay, Syrah. Syrah is an elegant fabric, always using multi-filament yarns to create lustrous, finely woven fabric. It's often used to make scarves and ties. And it has this slightly ribbed surface. You see that? Really nice. And organzas are often made iridescent, which means you have one color going in one grain and you have another color going in the other grain. So you see how when the light picks up, you see these greens in this russet brown orange fabric. Okay, so iridescent. And then here's a metallic effect organza, which is not the same as that crazy glittery one. This is a polyester one. This is the glittery one. Do you see this one is glittery and this one is metallic? I hope you are seeing the difference there. Polyester, silk. 
I know, hang in there. I have so many things to share with you guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This video is so long, but look at all these bookmarks. I, I like saved all these bookmarks. This is, I know, I'm a mess. Can you imagine? I had to split this up into two videos because I had too many things to share. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Shot Silk. Okay, this is another way of saying the iridescent silk. So when you see things like this, where you have the green, and then there's some of that red shooting through that you can see in the shadows. These are Ottoman fabrics. Ottoman fabrics feature large flat horizontal stripes with spaces between them, okay? Look at how cool these are. They're like ribbed in the, uh, the texture, okay? That's a very wide rib. This is that Fabrics in Fashion Design book that I recently reviewed that I really, I've been really enjoying. This is a Duchess Satin. So Duchess Satin, it's got that smooth, lustrous, silk charmeuse surface, but it's much stiffer. It's like about 40 mummy. It's very um, you, sculptural. Okay, look at how you can build this jacket because of its, it's heavier, it's thicker and stiffer and not as drapey. So you can create these sculptural shapes. Love that. Here are some examples of the cotton organza, organdy, as opposed to the silk organza. It's got that lustrous look lustrous. I have a love-hate relationship with that word. This is Gazar. So remember when I was showing you the satin face organzas and I said they're similar to Gazar's? Okay, Gazar's are a stiff fabric of pure silk similar to double or triple organza but stronger and less transparent. All right, so look at this blouse. Well, because of all the ruching, you're not seeing how sheer it is. It's a little bit on the sheer side but definitely not as sheer as organza. Crepe Georgette, look at that. When you want something a little bit sheer, if you want it really thin so that you can ruche and have lots of drape, but chiffon is quite flimsy, Georgette is your girl. Here's some Shantung in action. Okay, Shantung is often quite stiff. So again, you can tailor it and make more sculptural shapes than something like a charmeuse. Velvet, you can make velvet out of lots of different things. Um, the next couple of weeks or maybe next week, I'm gonna do a video on how to render nap fabrics, which includes velvet, and I'm gonna explain what the hell velvet actually is, but you can make it out of silk, or you can make it out of viscose, rayon, and you see how the silk ones are more lustrous, more glossy, like look at this coat, and look at this jacket compared to how this one is a bit duller. Even this one, it's shinier, but it's still not as glossy as these pieces. This is Moir, okay, related to Bengaline, and I wish it wasn't black in this example, but do you see the wood grain in there? Okay, you're gonna see that in the fabrics. This is a much better example because it's gray and this white one, it almost looks like camo, like textural camo a little bit. And I like to use Habitai as a lining, but you can also use it as a shell fabric. Okay, it's just a lightweight, simple, plain, versatile sort of fabric. I hope I showed you all enough stuff to kind of build your base knowledge of silk fabrics give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and helpful. My homework to you is to go look at fabric, go feel fabric, right? Because fashion is how things look, but it's also how things feel on your body. And if it doesn't feel good on your body, people are not going to buy it, especially when they're priced like silk is priced. Am I right? Yes, I am. Well, not always, but about this, I definitely am. <laughs> All right, uh, I hope you took good notes and I will see you in the next video.